Recently, I bought a Power Wheels car on Marketplace, and the kids were super excited. Heck, I was even super excited because I had always wanted one of these when I was a kid. Sadly, the battery was heavily degraded, and after about 10 minutes of driving, it would die, and the kids would be super sad, and then I had to haul it back into the garage, hook it up, charge it up for a couple hours, and by then, they had already lost interest, and I was super bummed out about them not being able to drive it. Not only that, the car was super slow to the point where you could almost walk faster than it. And that's no fun. The kids didn't like that, and it's really boring. To fix both these problems, I decided to swap out the 12 volt stock battery with a 20 volt drill battery, since I had several of these lying around the house. The benefits of this upgrade are that I have amazing flexibility swapping out these batteries when they run low, and never have to wait for a charge on the stock battery. The other one too is I'm supplying 20 volts of power straight to the motors, which should increase the speed of the car significantly. If you have similar issues and you're looking to put new life into your Power Wheels car, stick around and see how I do it. Let's get started. And stick around to the end of the video and see if I can even drive this. <laughs> So as you can see here, we have a top-down view of the Jeep, and we're gonna take the seat off and get a look inside. Now usually the batteries and the cables and components will be under the seat on most of these power wheels. Uh, however, you might find it in the hood. The previous owner did say he did a battery upgrade, and it kind of looks at it based on the cables and even the battery strap. So to get the battery out, you unscrew the battery strap. Pretty easy. Take off the leads and the battery just comes right out. Boom. So for the cables, I'm gonna trim them right where that tape is. And strip them about an inch or so. Twist them up just for the adapter. So this connector comes with the adapter and it's perfect for a situation like this. Uh, it allows me to hook in the adapter straight into the overall system without having to do a permanent fix on it. And hook in the adapter here. sure the cables are nice and connected and there you have it guys that's the adapter just plugged into the the car so mounting location was a no-brainer for me as I wanted it behind the seat um, this allowed for the battery to be out of the way of the kids and didn't impact operation and also the seat there the plastic was thin enough to where it doesn't affect the shielding on that that cable and allows for me to just put in the battery like that and check status if necessary. So with the battery in and everything plugged up, let's do a demo run. I'd say that's pretty good. So now that I've done the demo run, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's get the seat back on and have the kids drive it around and see how it performs. As you can see guys, the upgrade was a huge success and the kids loved it. Even the neighbors were amazed by the performance. 
It worked extremely well in the low and high power settings regulated by the onboard shifter knob. But I'll tell you what, it was really awesome seeing it in a high power mode and watching the kids haul down the street. If you like this upgrade and you're looking to do it yourself, it'll run you less than 50 bucks and take you less than 10 minutes. Check out the links I provided in the description below for all the items I used. More videos on modifying this car and other fixes and projects are coming up very soon. Therefore, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when the next video drops. Guys, hopefully you learned something and that you really enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Remember, don't just fix it, make it better. I'll see you next time.